this is human warnings. This will be a ramble, and if you don't like the deep end, then go back to the shallow end. Okay, so these are reviews with spoilers for I'll Take Your Dead and Extremity. Tons of spoilers, because I've come to realize that any review is gives spoilers. If you say the movie was good, that's a spoiler. If you say the movie was terrible, it's a spoiler. And it will influence a person's um, experience watching the movie. For example, um, everybody said Terminator Genesis was awful, a terrible disgrace. So much so that when I finally watched it, I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't unwatchably awful. I mean... So, I mean, it influences your... And then, on the other hand, there'll be movies where everybody says they're the most amazing movie ever, like Inglorious Bastards, and then you watch it, and you're you're quite uh, let down by how much they suck. So, you know, half the movies that I champion, I champion them because I feel they haven't... They've been unfairly trashed. And whereas I probably would have trashed them if everybody was praising them. So, you react like that... Uh, so, yeah, there's no way you can't spoil a movie with a review. So, I'll Take Your Dead was uh, really good. Uh, the concept of it is that the guy in the picture, the guy on the top, he has to dispose of bodies. People drop off dead bodies at his house, and he has to, his job is to dispose of them. So, he's constantly cutting arms off and throwing them in a vat of acid and all that. And he's got a daughter who lives there. And she's a little girl, and she um, she has to see a lot of this stuff. And he's actually a really nice guy, but he was sort of forced into this lifestyle. He had no choice. Um, so uh, what happens is um, he gets some bodies dropped off at the beginning at his house, and he finds out that one of them is still alive, and it's a girl. And, uh, you know, like a 25-year-old girl. And... Um, he doesn't kill her. He ties her up. And she, of course, thinks he's a maniac. And um, she, uh, he tells her, just you just got to sit tight for a little bit and I'll let you go and you can get away. But like in the meantime, whoever dumped you here wants you dead. And she's like... Bleh, bleh, bleh. And then uh, somehow she gets uh, a cell phone at some point, contact, access to a cell phone. So she calls her boyfriend and says, help me, help me. But her boyfriend was one of he was one of the people that wanted her dead, so then they show up to kill her to kill her. Um, so what he had what the the uh, the body disposable disposer guy said was true. Like you, whoever it was, uh, you know, they want you dead. So they come to kill her, and the uh, the body disposer guy saves her life and kills the other people, and uh, and um, that's basically it. Um, there's there is go there are ghosts of all the people that um that uh, he's disposed of in the house and the little girl always sees them. Um, so that's a bit weird, but overall, what a fun original idea for a movie. And uh, it also takes the time to get into the psychology of the main character, the body disposer guy, and you get to see that he's actually not a villain at all. So there's a lot of. Uh, development character growth in this movie it's quite impressive now a similar movie that I'm, I'm almost done watching right now uh, is called Extremity I'll be done by the time I'm done reviewing uh, but what it is is it, it's similar because it also has character development that you would not expect where the villains are not necessarily the villains and the heroes aren't necessarily the villain the villains the heroes aren't necessarily the heroes and uh, so what the concept of this one is that you pay to get tortured you're paying like uh this place and you sign a waiver and they're allowed to scare the living shit out of you uh with absolutely all you know you have no more rights left you're relinquishing all rights um i was hesitant to watch this movie because i don't like gore and i figured there's no way this won't be gore but again it's not really gore it's more like they're trying to scare her by like you know putting her in claustrophobic areas or playing mind games on her uh that's quite interesting and it's it gets deep right because it's you think it might turn in like the way you go into a movie thinking that this is going to be like terrible and these people are going to be um monsters that are going to like really fuck her up 
but you find out that they're actually trying to do it's a psychological um there's psychological ideas behind what they're doing they're actually trying to help her and that's fascinating and as it's going there's 35 minutes left of the movie we're finding out that the main character really is messed up in the head and she really wants them to torture her and then you're finding out that the people who organized this whole torture thing they're like they're actually really nice people to some degree the main guy who organized it like the scene just finished where he's on the phone with his ex-wife and he's like asking to talk to his little daughter who he loves <laughs> so what a switcheroo where like the villains are actually pretty nice guys and so it's, it's uh, fascinating um, i'm gonna finish the 35 minutes so i'll make a few more comments as it goes let me interject though with a few thoughts about horror movies um, I, I'm a horror movie junkie. I'll watch any horror movie, and usually even the bad ones keep me interested. Um, I think I've always been saying that there's some masterpiece movie that's horror movie that's dying to get made that hasn't, but it will, and it'll revolutionize everything. Um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show would be an example of a musical that was a masterpiece that was dying to be made, and it finally was made, because so many other musicals don't utilize the... Um, the platform of, of musicals, but Rocky Horror Picture Show is almost perfect. Um, anyways, uh, I also think that based on these two movies, I mean, horror movies might be the last low budget movies that where where you can actually be creative. Um, you certainly can't do it in expensive drama movies. Um, they're always going to be bullshit cookie cutter. Uh, comic book movies are becoming like that where you're never going to be able to get a, get to see an original comic book movie because there's just too much money invested and they can't afford to take any chances. But horror movies, they don't cost a lot of money. They can take chances and they do make money. People would say that uh, The Shining was a masterpiece. I thought The Shining was boring. I never, I didn't think it was scary at all. Um, so when I say that there's a, a masterpiece horror movie that's waiting aching to get made and it's gonna just blow everybody's mind uh i don't think one there's been a horror movie yet that's been made that really was like the perfect horror movie but i think it will it will be made at some point i, I would say that breaking bad um analogously analogously uh it was the perfect tv show that changed tv and now everybody's trying to copy it and uh the low standards that used to exist in tv shows you can't do that anymore after Breaking Bad. It kind of killed every TV show. And just for your information, my favorite types of horror movies are the ghost stories. Like there's a ghost in a, in, a, in a house. I'll always watch those movies. That's my absolute favorite. Gore, I really don't like. I find it gross. Um, I find zombie movies, movies as boring as uh, war movies. I find them to be just so repetitive and boring. Vampire movies are basically, they've been killed. They've been overkill. Werewolf movies, same thing. Just don't care. Yeah, just ghost stories are the, that's where, I, that's where I'm at. And what's very interesting about these two movies, I'll Take Your Dead in Extremity, is that they're marketed as horror movies and they kind of do fit into that genre. But surprisingly, they work as dramas. So the fact that you can actually get a good movie, a good drama movie, in the horror genre, uh, you you stand a better chance at, at this point in time, in this day and age, than uh, the Oscar-nominated dramas, which are all forgettable and nobody ever watches them again after they win the Oscar because they're really just acting vehicles. Like that movie Monster with Charlize Theron, where it was just about her showing that she's not just a pretty face and she can get all ugly and act, right? That's all it, that's all it was. It was an acting vehicle for Charlize Theron for her to uh, show her chops and win an Oscar. And that's it. Nobody would ever watch that movie ever again. Nobody has watched that movie since it won the Oscar, most likely. And all these Oscar-winning uh, film festival darlings, they're all terrible. Another good example would be um, Lady Bird, which I watched a year ago just because it was getting so much attention. And it's the most boring, awful movie. The most forgettable bullshit story ever and it, it was a acting vehicle for Cersei Ronan and that's all or or Juno with Michael Sarah and the um, lesbian girl I forget her name um, it was it got all the press it got so famous and it was 
I never saw it because I know it sucks. There's like the concept is so bad that like of romanticizing teen pregnancy. And I even said, you know, I, I bet you so many girls are going to get pregnant now because of that movie, like teenage girls. And incidentally, apparently the writer, uh, Diablo Cody, if there's something like that, even she said it's a terrible movie. <laughs> what a terrible idea. And I saw her other movie, Jennifer's Body, and that was actually surprisingly good. Come to think of it, um, the horror genre might be the perfect um, pretense to sell your movie. Just find some element that you can say it's a horror movie and market it like a horror movie. And you can actually have a really creative idea that will get made and be watched by people. I might actually do that. You know, my new book, When I Go to Hell, there are elements that I could say are horror. So just maybe just have a, you know, sell out a little bit. It's like having a car chase in your movie in order to get people to watch it. So just have a couple scary moments and uh, people will go see it. Maybe that's it. Because you can't just make a drama like, oh, I've got a story when I go to hell and it's about uh, the question of what what is good and what is evil. And Because nobody's going to want to, nobody wants literature, right? People are all ADD and nobody wants to make, um, produce or, or um, you know, yeah, a movie that's, uh, or distribute a movie that doesn't have a genre. And I would say drama is the least desired uh, genre. Uh, for, by uh, producers and distributors unless you got Brad Pitt or Kate Blanchett in your movie and unless you're already a well-known director like Darren Aronofsky nobody will take a chance on a Spike Lee kind of movie um, if Spike Lee was not big right now he wouldn't, he wouldn't stand a chance making movies like being John Malkovich I think in this day and age and I think part of the reason why so many people are willing to take a chance with a horror movie is because a horror movie at least promises some kind of shock even if it's just cheap shock scares at least you know you're getting that whereas a movie like Lady Bird one of these awful dramas or monster you're not promised anything you it might be and usually is just an extremely boring movie and you have to pay attention the worst part about the dramas is that you have to pay attention to everything for two hours in order to understand the um, the payoff at the end or the the main point, but more often than not, the main point is terrible. So you've invested for two hours only to find out that it had no main point. A horror movie might have a deep a deep uh, message, or you know, some are more deep than others, like such as these two movies. But the, the the good part is that you can you can do your dishes, you can leave the room, you can go to the bathroom, and you still will know that you haven't missed something uh, that prevents you from watching the rest of the movie because you you know what you're, you're you're in for so it works on the two layers it works on the shallow layer and the deep layer and if you find out it actually is a really good movie or a deep movie you can revisit it if you missed something when you went to the bathroom it kind of reminds me about how Stanley Kubrick used to um, watch commercials and he said some of these commercials are the best the most well done uh, mini films because they get give you all the information in the shortest amount of time and I think he um, he he was a fan of watching commercials and studying the way they were shot so I think like horror movies they're deceptively simple and stupid but they do convey things really quickly without like long time periods of dialogue and all the things that these terrible movies like Lady Bird if you haven't seen Lady Bird, watch it for if you want to see a movie where nothing happens the whole time. It's the most empty, boring movie where it's like the kind of movie where someone is just like eating breakfast with their family for five minutes. Would you like some orange juice? No. Oh, what's wrong? What are you doing today? Like just bullshit that you could you don't watch a movie to, to see things that you can already see in your daily life. Like that, you know, when you good morning, mom. How are you? Oh, not bad. Would you like some orange juice? Oh, are you telling me we ran out of orange juice? That's not uh <laughs> That's not the kind of stuff that movies should have in them. Yeah, I'll repeat that uh these two movies, Extremity and I'll Take Your Dead, they are not horrors and they are not thrillers. 
There's nothing scary or thrilling going on at any point, really, in these movies. Um, they, they're only, the only thing that, they can pass as horrors or thrillers, I suppose, because of the subject matter, because it sounds like a scary movie. But it's actually a drama, and it passes, and it's a good drama. They're both good dramas. Yeah, so this movie, Extremity, it's about 20 minutes left, 25 minutes left. It's so cool that it, it starts out like you think it's good, all hell's going to break loose. You think, oh my God, she's volunteering to go to this like torture place where they get to do anything they want to her. And it, so you're you're getting ready for all this scariness. And then as it goes, you find out that the people who run the place are just really nice people. And they've got, you know, he's not allowed to visit his daughter and he's running out of money. And... Um, and they're, they're talking about how they're scared and they've got personal issues. <laughs> so clever. Oh, and that the girl that signed up for it is like way more of a maniac than they are. I would say that these movies fail in that they're not scary, they're not horrors, and it's false advertising if that's what you were hoping for. So, yeah, they fail in that regard. But they sneak in and they're good as dramas. They're better than most dramas that win Oscars uh, because... They're more clever. Their ideas are more clever. They're even more deep. and per, like They make more of a statement. Um, they're more deep than any of these Oscar-winning movies. So it, it's, it's really funny. In Extremity, they're showing flashbacks to when she was a little kid. And she has like black hair when she's a little kid. But now she has blonde hair. And I've never understood why they do that in movies. Because uh, black hair doesn't turn blonde. It's the reverse your hair is always going to be lighter when you're younger. So are you just saying that she dyes her hair? And if you are saying that, doesn't that defeat the point of the movie? Like, people shouldn't, shouldn't be dyeing their hair in movies. Like, you know, that's like saying she's wearing blue contact lenses or something. I don't get it. You know, it's like in movies when they've got siblings that look nothing like each other. And one wonders, why did you not bother to make them look like siblings at all? It's just it's just not believable. So oh, just for the sake of it, I'll list some uh, some more uh, pretentious Oscar movies, Oscar darlings that were awful. Uh, Birdman, okay, beautifully shot, but an empty, stupid movie. Like it, it had no, it was trying to be profound, but it wasn't. The Shape of Water, total piece of shit. Guillermo del Toro does better movies, but The Shape of Water was awful. It's a movie about bestiality. Gravity, beautifully shot, terribly written. The drama is just cringeworthy, awful. Oh, here's like the worst movie of all time, The Martian with Matt Damon, where the whole movie is just him growing plants. <laughs> the Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Oh yeah, there was one called Up in the Air, I think, starring George Clooney, directed by Jason Reitman. And um, I watched it with my mother like 10 years ago, and it was it was a film festival darling and after I watched it my mom's like what'd you think and I go it was good but I need more than good in a movie um, I don't go to see good I go to see great and it was just this forgettable utterly forgettable movie and nobody will ever watch it again for the rest of time but it was a darling at the festivals but it was a total piece of shit and that's Jason Reitman that's his uh that's his calling card, is that he just makes forgettable shit. His Ghostbusters movie, I guess, will suck, because I also saw his other movie, Thank You for Smoking, and that was just forgettable bullshit. It's pretentious. Um, the King's Speech, uh, forgettable. Nobody will ever watch it again for the rest of time. Oh, this is really cool. This is a huge spoiler for the movie Extremity. Uh, so it's near the end, and you find out, right? She paid to get the shit scared out of her so she can deal with her psychological issues and you find out that they, they bring her father in and he's like look I'm sorry and you know I didn't mean this is the only way they'd let me go come and see you is I had to wear this skeleton mask the whole time and it's like that's so cool that's psychological uh, that's exactly what you would do to scare the living fuck out of somebody that her father who molested her and she's avoided him her whole life hasn't seen him in 20 years now she has to face him oh very well very well done 
Right, she's tied up and she has to listen to all his excuses and he's all the bullshit things like, I never meant to hurt you, I was drinking the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that's torture, all right. And she just stabbed him in the dick. She stabbed her father in the dick. See, you don't get to see that in um, Juno or um, Lady Bird. And talk about female empo- empowerment, right? Captain Marvel, um, Ray in the Star Wars. Okay, this girl... She goes into a place where uh, they're supposed to. She's supposed to be tortured. She wants to get tortured by all of them. She stabs her father in the dick when they try to scare her that way. <laughs> and now everybody's afraid of her. She's turned into the villain. She's now the antagonist. You know, I don't think I've ever seen a movie with a concept like this one, where the uh, the victim turns into the um, the aggressor, where the um, they were trying to scare her, but now she's scaring the shit out of all of them. I mean, there's been similar movies, but never quite like this. And I think this is doing it better than any other movie has done that. And this is an example of how this B movie, this, you know, low budget horror movie, has at least it has a more clever concept than all the Oscar winning movies. Because more often than not, like Lady Bird has no concept at all. It's just a bullshit empty movie. So was Juno. All these dramas. At least at least this one has an idea. I'm not saying this is a great movie. I would probably give these two movies a six or a seven out of ten. But they're they're just better than everything than all these other movies, is all I'm saying. They're not great movies. They're just better than Juno and all those Oscar winning movies. I mean, like something like Juno, I've never even seen Juno, but I just know exactly what it is. But I won't list that one then. Monster. Uh, Precious well those are just movies that are shock value like how disgusting they are Um, but those two movies and um, Up in the Air and um, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button Lady Bird these movies are like a 3 out of 10 in terms of how bad and boring forgettable you, you would fall asleep watching those movies that movie Precious I remember some people were watching it in a room that I was in at one point and I'm, I just overheard it. I was like, had earplugs on. I was trying to avoid it. But then I just overhear that like she's pregnant by her father and her mother is like kicking her down the stairs. And I just said, it, I said to the people that were watching, I'm like, is this as bad as it sounds? And they go, yeah. Who, what, what kind of lunatic watches a movie like that? And I'm sorry, that, that shouldn't make it an Oscar winning movie just because it's disgusting. This movie has a 4.3 rating on IMDb, which just tells me again that you just can't trust these ratings anymore. Uh, when they give Black Panther and Captain Marvel like a 10 out of 10, um, I just don't... It, uh, the media, the pop media, no longer has any... Um, what's the word? Credibility. And then she just goes, uh, she goes, do you know what's at the bottom of hell? Charlatans and con artists. I'm like... See, I like that line better than any line in, in um, Lady Bird. Wow, that movie was hardcore. I have never seen um, a female empowerment movie done that well, <laughs> maybe ever. And my final thought that I'm going to continue thinking about is that horror is really the the only free genre left. When, when I say free, I mean free where the filmmakers can do whatever they want. You're never going to see another Marvel movie or Disney movie that takes any chances. And pretty soon Disney's going to own everything. So there'll never be another big budget movie that takes any chances. If you like gays, click like. If you like blacks, comment. If you like women, click notification bell. If you like gay women, subscribe. And if you like gay black women, uh, Patreon, Human Warnings, give me money.